Hi, this is David Kittner with Active Wellness Boot Camps, and I'm here in Louisville, Kentucky with Kara Moore from MoreResults.com. Um, one of the questions I had from one of the boot campers had to do with nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, she eats healthy, she eats fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, the whole package, uh, works out three or four times a week, but is still struggling with food cravings. Uh, and I was wondering if there's anything you could do, any advice you can give that would uh, help her out and other people who are struggling with the same problem. Sure. Well, I think one of the things to remember about cravings is that cravings are tameable. And so I think a lot of times people think that I can't control this, and once they feel it coming on, it kind of consumes them until they have to give in. That, that's their only alternative to dealing with it. And so I always teach um, my clients to remember that cravings are like children. So when you have a child who's in the grocery store with you perhaps and is crying for candy or screaming for candy and out of control, the easiest thing to do is to give in. And so if we can think of our cravings like kids who are cra screaming and crying and out of control, if you had a child, you know the worst thing to do is to give in to that because it's just going to make it that much more intense. And so the next time you experience that craving or the next time you bring your child to the grocery store, they're just going to cry louder until they get what they want. So if you think of your cravings as an ocean wave, it goes up in intensity and then it drops back down. All we have to do is get to the top of that peak and then it begins to go away and it gets easier and easier to say no to it. So a couple of things that I always tell my clients to do. One is that you have to ride out that wave. So you have to get to the peak. So a couple of things to do. One is to find a substitute activity. So for example, if somebody is really giving into a 3 p.m. chocolate fix, finding something else to do, going for a walk, Maybe find a drawer at home that you need to reorganize. I, I know I have a million to-do lists, and if I can just pick one of those activities, that'll help me get to that top of that wave and make it easier to say no from there on out. So a substitute activity. Another thing would be to find an alternative. Instead of going for the chocolate, perhaps choosing a piece of fruit, maybe drizzled with a little bit of chocolate. Mm -hmm. So you're getting something else. Sure. Um, you could consider brushing your teeth. You hear that you know, alternative or chewing gum. Those are great ways to get around it. And then the last thing I always tell people to remember is to delay. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes before that craving starts to decrease in intensity. So if you can just wait it out for 10 to 15 minutes, odds are you're going to start to forget about whatever you're craving. Um, now that doesn't mean you want to sit down at the kitchen table, fork in hand, staring down the chocolate cake. You know, you need to occupy yourself with something else for that 10 to 15 minute period. But that, those three things are the best approach over time to get rid of cravings. And just remembering that they are tameable, the more you practice those things, the less and less you're going to be interested in the, in, in the food or the craving, and the more you're going to be able to beat it. Awesome. That's great advice, Kara. Appreciate it very much. Sure. So Kara Moore from MoreResults.com. I'm David Kittner from ActiveWellnessBootCamps.com. Thanks very much, and talk to you soon. Bye.